Understanding potential effects of culture operations on marine shorebirds is also important to growers. On shellfish farms, some species of marine shorebirds feed directly on the shellfish, while others feed on the organisms that thrive in the shellfish crops or culture equipment. The collective evidence from a variety of shore and seabird species evaluated suggests there is no significant negative impact. Oyster shells, it turns out, are not only valuable habitat in the estuary, but on land as well. At Leadbetter Point in Willapa Bay, growers have contributed oyster shell for a Willapa National Wildlife Refuge project to provide endangered snowy plovers with nesting habitat. Not only are the shells terrific habitat for plover nesting, but the endangered pink sand verbena made a surprise appearance in the shell habitat and has also thrived. On the west coast, shellfish are farmed on the bottom in the area that goes dry at low tide or suspended from rafts or lines in deep water using a variety of methods. For a tideland farm, the work schedule is dictated by the tide chart. In a 24-hour period, there are two low tides and shellfish beds are generally exposed just on the lower of the two. During the summer, that lower low tide comes during the day. In the winter, low tide comes in the middle of the night, so crews don headlamps and come out to work the tides. While some farms rely on natural reproduction to reseed their beds, most growers depend on hatcheries to produce their seed. The Pacific Northwest has some of the largest and most successful hatcheries in the world. There are no commercial feeds for shellfish. They eat live algae. So much of the work in the hatchery is producing multiple species of plankton in greenhouses for the various larval stages to eat. Oysters dominate farm shellfish production on the west coast. With an estimated 94 million pounds harvested annually, this represents 89% of the shellfish grown. A number of species of oysters are farmed, but the bulk of the production is Pacific oysters, often named for the bay or area they're grown. Oysters typically are sold as fresh shucked oyster meat, live or frozen in the shell, or frozen in the cup shell with the top shell removed. Most oysters are farmed directly on the bottom, with some grown in bags on the bottom or on racks. In muddy areas, they're grown attached to ropes supported on stakes. After oysters, manila clams are the next most significant West Coast crop, representing about 8% of the annual mass of farm shellfish harvested. This represents approximately 8.5 million pounds, most of which are harvested by hand with rakes at low tide. In many areas, beds are covered by predator nets to keep crabs, moon snails, and diving ducks, such as scoters, from eating the crops. On my farm in Samish Bay, I've developed a machine adapted from a tulip bulb harvester to harvest manila clams, which are grown in rows under predator netting. Mussels rank third in production with an annual West Coast harvest of approximately two and a half million pounds. Unlike the other shellfish species which are grown on the bottom, mussels are always grown suspended from rafts or lines floating on the surface. Here in Totten Inlet, Washington, mussels are being grown on ropes about 15 feet long hanging down from these rafts. Two different species of blue mussels are cultured on the West Coast. Some mussel seed is collected from natural spawning in Penn Cove, Washington, and the rest is produced in hatcheries. Gooey duck clams have been farmed in Puget Sound since 1991, but only at a commercial scale since 1996. Production today is less than 1% of the total West Coast farm shellfish. Raised primarily for the sushi market, they command the highest price of all West Coast shellfish. 
While an exciting opportunity for growers, expansion has been hampered by seed availability, shoreline use conflicts, and limited locations with appropriate water quality and substrate conditions. Gooey ducks are unique in a number of ways besides their unusual appearance. They are the largest burrowing clam in the world, with a record clam exceeding 16 pounds. They're also very long-lived. The oldest one, 164 years old, was found in British Columbia. With flesh and shell combined, the mass of the wild gooey ducks in Puget Sound is greater than any other marine animal. Gooey ducks require deep sandy substrate for farming, and like all shellfish, clean water. This means limited areas are available for culturing them. Gooey duck seed, like adults, can't get all of their body inside their shells. Because of that, they're vulnerable to predation and drying out if they're exposed at low tide. To protect them, they are planted in four to six inch diameter nursery tubes. The tubes hold water when the tide goes out, keeping the seed moist, and individual or blanket nets are placed over the tops of each nursery tube to exclude predators. The nursery tubes are removed after a year or so once the gooey ducks are deep enough to avoid predation and drying out. After five or six years from when the seed are planted, they are down about three feet deep in the beach, weigh approximately two pounds each, and are ready for market. They are harvested by pumping water into the sand around them until they come loose and can be pulled out. The same method is used by divers to harvest 4 million pounds of wild subtitle gooey ducks annually. Like other culture gear, the structure provided by gooey duck nursery tubes turns out to be great habitat. This time-lapse video of nursery tubes shows how these structures used to protect baby gooey duck clams are used by a wide range of fish, crabs, and other organisms to forage for food and to find refuge from predators. Pacific Coast shellfish growers are proud of our century and a half of sustainably farming the tidelands. As one of those shellfish growers and a biologist, it's rewarding producing nutritious crops that provide valuable ecological services while they grow. With millions of people moving to coastal areas in the years ahead, it's going to take all of us working together to protect water quality and preserve the future of this historic industry. Farmer. He's a gooey duck and wants a chunk and muscle grow. 